based on the well-loved video game Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In the board game, players compete against each other to build their kingdoms, find resources, fight each other and neutral enemies, and win the many different scenarios in Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game. And in this video series, we'll be teaching you how to play Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game, game designed by Kamil Bialkowski and Jakub S. Oleksik, and published by Archon Studio. And hi everyone, it's Stella and Tarrant here from Maple University. This will be a little bit different to our typical how to play as we'll be splitting this into a series of 10 different chapters from how to set up, how to build your kingdoms, explore, the expansions of the game and more. We film these videos as a series so to learn how to play the entire game you'll want to watch the entire series but if you want to come back to individual videos they are split up for refreshers. We've put the links in the video description for all tutorial videos or you can play the playlist so you can watch it from start to finish. And now let's get to the classroom. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is played in missions, so to begin setup you'll need to choose a mission from the mission book. In this video we'll be showing you from Brave New World. This is a 2-3 player clash scenario which means that all players are competing against each other to be the one who completes a specific victory condition. Each player will choose one of the factions and takes all faction components which are for the most part distinguishable by the faction colour. You will have your town board which you flip face up and note that your faction colour is represented by the border around this side. You'll have one double sided hero card and at this point you have to choose your main hero for the scenario and this will either be a hero of might represented by the helmet or a hero of magic represented by the wizard's hat. You'll have 20 faction coloured cubes and you place one of them into the first slot at the bottom of your hero's track. This track represents your hero's level. You'll start at level 1 and increase across the course of the game hopefully as high as level 7. Anywhere you see these Roman numeral numbers throughout the game it represents level, whether it be a hero level or the level of an enemy you're facing. Below your town board lay out your seven town building tiles so that the image forms a panorama. These represent the buildings you're yet to construct. The mission setup will show you any starting buildings and so you'll move that building to your town board as constructed. Note that a building tile with two icons represents two different buildings. In this instance I start with the bronze dwelling but not the blacksmith so I will flip this over to the bronze dwelling only side. A circular icon is a constructed building, a rectangle is a building which can later be constructed. In the matching slots place your build token, your population token and your spell book all face up. Find the seven unit cards in your faction's colour. These cards are double sided. There is an upgraded side with a holographic finish which is called a pack and there is a basic side which is called a few. Based on this star in the top right corner units are split into bronze, silver and gold tier. And the mission setup will tell you what your starting units are. Here you get a few of the bronze unit with the highest recruitment cost and a pack of the bronze unit with the lowest recruitment cost. Players starting units should go in piles near the combat board with the rest kept near your town for future recruitment. Next players will use cards with this back to assemble their own personal might and magic decks of 9 cards. We're going to talk about what these cards are and how to assemble this deck in chapter 2. Check the mission book to determine each player's starting resources and starting income in the three types of resources, money, building materials and valuables. You'll take your starting resources in tokens and set your starting income with cubes on your town board. Next set up the map tiles. You'll separate the tiles based on the numbers on their backs and this represents the level of the neutral enemies you might find there. For the level 1 tiles look through them and find the one which depicts your faction. Any which aren't in use get returned to the box. Shuffle all of the other decks face down. Set up the map as depicted in the mission book. 
with the level 1 tiles face up and nearest where you're seated. If instructed by mission setup, you may also deal tiles of a certain level to each player face down. These are tiles you'll be able to add to the map for yourself as you explore. Set up the round tracker and shuffle and place the astrology cards face down nearby. Mark the current round with a black cube. And if the mission has any timed events, you may want to mark those with black cubes as well. Beside the combat board, shuffle and place the four face down decks of neutral units, bronze, silver, gold and azure. Also place the gate, wall and arrow tower cards nearby, they may be needed in combat. Cards with this back are returned to the box, they're used only for solo play. The cards with this back we'll talk about in chapter 2. And keep all remaining components nearby ready for use. The black cubes, morale tokens, movement points, treasure dice, resource dice, attack dice, gold, building materials and valuables, defense paralysis tokens, and damage tokens. Next players collectively choose a difficulty level, easy, normal, hard, or impossible. This determines how easy or difficult the enemies will be as you explore throughout the scenario. And it also determines a starting bonus which is taken now. For example, in the easy mode, each player could choose to roll two resource dice and gain the result, or add two artifact cards to their might and magic deck. Each player takes the mini depicting their chosen main hero, places it in the center field of their starting tile, which represents their town, and may rotate this tile to any orientation of their choosing. Choose a first player, and you're now ready to play. And that's the general setup for Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game. In the next chapter, we'll take you through how to set up the player decks and decks of cards. Thanks so much for watching. See you there.